Good morning, students. So, in the last class, we uh, derived some expressions based on the loss one, the intensity of electric field due to different objects. And in uh, almost all the calculations, we consider that uh, uniform distribution of the charge. That means whether it is uh, surface density or it is volume density, we consider the uniform uh, charge density. I hope all of you understood those uh, derivations. And so with those derivations, now we should get an idea how to apply the Gauss law. Whether it may be uniform distribution of the charge or whether it may be non-uniform distribution of the charge. So how to apply the Gauss law, that idea you should get. And so now with that idea, now we are going to solve about this, uh, some problems based on the non-uniform charge distribution. So write that. So in a sphere of radius r, the charge is varying according to the expression rho is equal to, so the charge at h is varying according to the equation rho is equal to rho naught into 1 minus small r by capital R, where rho naught is positive constant and small r is the distance from the center of the sphere, center of the sphere. Find an expression for Find an expression for that is the first question. That means intensity of electric field when R is less than R. That means inside, you can write, find the intensity of electric field inside and outside when R is greater than R. And also find the E maximum. That means maximum intensity of electric field. And we need to find the where the tendency becomes maximum. So these are the calculations required for us. So then charge density, volume charge density is varying according to that equation. So we need to find the density of the electric field inside, outside and the maximum value we need to find. Suppose I am taking first of all the inside calculation here. So when inside calculation is suppose if you want to find the density of the electric field at this point, right? Then we need to consider a constant surface here with R as a radius. And then this is the, this is the element what we are considering here, small element of uh, radius r and minus dr. So first I am calculating this, uh, then I just going to write the cost law. So by using this cost law we can write this as uh, flux is equal to the surface integral of a bar dot da bar is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times charge enclosure, right? Now this charge enclosure is nothing but, now let us see first step, I am doing this like uh, left hand side calculation. So left hand side calculation is see here we can say a small element of area here, then electric field will be along this direction E, and because it is a positive charge, and the A bar is also we know it will be radially outwards, right? And so now these two are along the same direction, so I can write this as, integral of E into dA into cos 0 we can write. So which is uh, Q in by epsilon 1. Right? And now this term I can write as E into integral of dA that is equal to Q in by epsilon 1. Or this is E into 4 pi small r square. The total surface area of this element uh, you will get. This is Q in by epsilon 1. Let's suppose this is the equation 1. And so now in this we need to calculate this Q in value, the charge enclosed by the constant surface. So therefore this charge enclosed by Gaussian surface we can write it as uh, So charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface is nothing but Q in is equal to integral of rho into dV we need to write. Because in the previous problems or in the previous derivations, Q in means just to be mentioned as if rho is uniform charge density then rho into the volume of the element you can write. That is a, in our previous calculation, like uniformly charged sphere if we consider, then we mentioned just like rho into charge density into directly we mention like uh, volume. But again, since it is a variable here, the charge density is variable, we need to take the small element and then we should uh, write the integration here. And so that is nothing but I can write this as 
Qt is equal to integral of rho naught into 1 minus r by r into now this dv is nothing but volume of this spherical element. The small element for this charge we need to write here. The spherical element I am writing. The spherical element is nothing but 4 by r square into dr. This is the volume of the spherical element. Surface area 4 by r square is surface area. dr is the thickness. So that surface area and thickness will give us the volume of the element. You can't write totally this volume of this sphere. 4 by 3 pi r cube you can't write. Because charge density is more constant here. Charge density is variable. And so then now we need to write this integration. As we are finding our uh, actually we are solving the first part here. First part means we are finding this inside. Inside is nothing but r less than r. And so now we should uh, integrate this from 0 to small r. Therefore this is from 0 to uh, you can write this constant outside rho naught into 4 by into here integration is r square minus r u by r dr. This is from 0 to r. So therefore this given is equal to rho naught into 4 pi by integration you can carry out here. This is r square integration is r cube by 3 and here r cube integration is r power 4 by 4, right? So I can write this as r cube by 3 minus r power 4 by 4 r. So now it is the charge enclosure there, right? I can take this r square common. So rho naught into 4 pi r square I am taking common. Or r cube you can take common here. If you take r cube common then it is 1 by 3 minus r by 4 r unit. Right? Now that is charge enclosure. So substitute this charge enclosure in this equation here. Therefore from equation 1. Then E into, uh, sorry, this is E into 4 pi r square is equal to 1 by epsilon 1 times into rho naught into 4 pi r cube into 1 by 3 minus r by 4 r. So then 4 pi r square you can cancel here so that this final I can write this intensity of the field inside as rho naught into rho naught by epsilon naught into here one r will be there, r I am writing inside, so r by 3 minus r square by 4r. So this is the intensity of electric field inside this uh, spherical charge distribution here. Got it? The same processor as that of our previous calculations. The only difference is we need to calculate this q in value here, charge enclosure. So in the previous also we calculated that, but generally we write there as uh, rho into directly we write volume of this sphere if you want to write, then rho into 4 by 3 by r cube you can write if the charge density is constant. But here the charge density is variable, so we should write this integration. By taking the small spherical element, then we should integrate that. So then if we integrate this, then this is the expression what we are getting here. Right? So that is the expression for inside. So similarly let us see for this outside here. So we will write the expression for the inside here so that we can find this maximum value. So rho naught by epsilon naught into r by 3 minus uh, so this is r square by 4r. So this is our inside expression. Now similarly let us see this our outside calculation here. So for outside also actually everything will be same only. Just in the Q in calculation, just we need to change the limits. Right? So let us see this. Now this is the second part we are calculating. Outside. Small r is greater than r. Right? So when small r is greater than r, we can write this as this total calculation will be same. Just we need to change the diagram also. So I will draw this under the diagram for this outside. And it's actually our diagram should be like this. Suppose this is the sphere of radius r. Now we need to take a cos and surface outside this. That means if you want to take it, if you want to find the intensity of electric field at this point, if the distance r from the center, then we need to take a cos and surface passing through that point, right? So then this is our bar. Then here also we can say a small element here, the area element, dA. 
then index of electric field will be like this and dA vector will be like this. Right? And so both are in the same direction. So this calibration is same. And this part will be same in our all derivations also. Right? So that means we take such an element here, like uh, then d into uh, e into dA cos 0, then e is constant that we can write outside, then e into dA you get the dA is nothing but 4 pi r square. So up to this there is no change. Again we need to make the same calculation. Next here. Charge enclosed by Gaussian surface. So the same calculation is Q in is equal to integral of rho into d v. Just here, when compared to our previous calculation, we need to change the limits. So therefore, this is Q in is equal to integral of rho naught into 1 minus into 4 pi r square dr. The same. It means here also we can set a small element here for this first furnace we write this element uh, charge enclosure in this element. And so then volume of that element we are writing here. That means 0 to uh, that means 4 pi r square is the surface area of this element and into dr is the volume of this element here, right? And so now uh, that limits we need to consider here. Charge and close between the Gaussian surface. This total line is dotted sphere is our Gaussian surface. Now you can't integrate from 0 to r because our r is greater than uh, this uh, capital R. And so our but charge in this position is only from center to the scapular only. This in this space there is no charge here. And so that we need to integrate from 0 to capital. And so this is rho naught into 4 pi into integral of r square minus r cube. This is r cube by r dr. Now limits are from 0 to capital. Therefore, this q in is equal to rho naught into 4 pi into this will be r cube by 3 minus here r power 4 by 4 you will get when you substitute here r power capital r power 4 then you can cancel this capital r and so then this is also r power 3 by 4 you will get finally after cancelling this denominator r and so now we can simplify this further rho naught into 4 pi into if we take LCM here and this will be r cube by 4 you will get right and so now I can substitute this Q in value this equation in our gas law equation and therefore from equation 1 you can write this as E into 4 pi r square is equal to 1 by epsilon naught into rho naught into 4 pi r cube by 12 and so then this 4 pi and 4 pi can cancel and therefore I can write this intensity of energy field outside the sphere as rho naught into r cube by rho naught into r cube by 12 epsilon naught r square so right so that is our outside expression got it the inside and outside are almost the calibration will be similar the only difference will lies here in this limits so if the limits we are changing we need to change from 0 to r when you are changing the limits from 0 to r, then automatically here this charge calibration, charge and closing, you will get some different expression when compared to our inside calibration. So that, that is our outside expression here. So I will write this expression here. So therefore this outside is equal to rho naught into r cube by 12 epsilon naught into r square unit. This is our outside expression. Next in this we need to find this uh, maximum field. We need to find the maximum uh, intensity of electric field. Now just by identifying absorb those two expressions and uh, where the field is maximum you will get an idea. Whether the field is becoming maximum inside the Gaussian surface or inside the sphere or outside the sphere. Just by seeing those expressions you can conclude that. So just if I absorb the outside. Outside is rho r cube by 12 epsilon naught r, right? That indicates the field is decreasing with r square, that is inversely proportional to r square. So that the field, there is no chance of becoming maximum here. The field outside the sphere, the field goes on decreasing. When this r value is increasing, it goes on decreasing. And so there is no possibility to get the maximum value outside. So the possibility is there for this inside here. So then, uh, 
if e is maximum then we know that its differentiation should be equal to zero now whether we need to differentiate this term or this term is that is nothing but what we are computing here the field only uh, there is possibility for the maximum only this inside because it is a continuous decreasing function this outside is and so that uh, i am going to differentiate this inside expression here so this d by dr of rho naught by 3 into r by r cube minus r square by 4r this is equal to zero now differentiate that rho naught by so this is epsilon rho naught by epsilon r into the differentiation of this r is 1 so 1 by 3 into 2r by 4r unit so this is equal to 0 right and so that i can write this as 1 by 3 is equal to r by 2r and therefore this r is equal to 2r by 3 That means at a distance of 2r by 3 from the center, the field is becoming maximum. At this distance, sometimes they may ask about this distance also, where the field is becoming maximum. So then this is the distance where the field will become maximum. And then let us write the now maximum value here. So just to calculate the maximum value, we need to substitute this r value in this equation. So I can write this as rho naught by epsilon naught into 1 by 3 into r is 2r by 3 minus 1 by 4r into r square 2r by 3 whole square right just we are substituting r value in this equation simple by that you will get this maximum value here so rho naught by epsilon naught this will be 2r by 9 so then this is r by 9 right Here four r square you get then four r will be cancelled and only this three square will be nine will be there and therefore this e maximum I like to write as rho naught into r by nine epsilon naught. So this is a maximum electric field. So it is a way of finding this maximum electric field here when the field is uh, when the channel density is variable. So that is we can find inside or we can find outside. And we can find the maximum values like this, right? So now this. Now let us go to another example based on this uh, uh, based on this non-uniform charge dissipation. So I have another problem based on this. Spherical ball of radius r capital R. Spherical ball of radius capital R is having is having uniform charge distribution. Is having some uniform charge distribution. The surrounding medium, the surrounding medium, is having the charge density. Is having the charge density <coughs> varying with the distance from the center of the ball, varying with the distance from the center of the ball as. Write the expression. Rho is equal to alpha by r. In brackets, alpha is constant. The r is nothing but distance from the center. Assume permittivity of the ball and the surrounding medium is unity. Assume permittivity of the ball and the surrounding medium is unity. If I write the question, if intensity of electric field outside the ball, intensity of electric field outside the ball is independent of is independent of distance of the point from the center of the ball 
is independent of distance of the ball from the center of the distance of the point from the center of the ball find find charge enclosed by the ball find charge enclosed by the ball so that means here this is a ball of radius r it is having some charge let's suppose i am taking this as some charge if it is given as uniform charge distribution right now the surrounding medium is also having some solid density now this solid density is varying like this now suppose if i am taking a point here then we need to take a gaussian surface like this right this is our capital r small r now the given information is given condition is at this point the intensity of the electric field is independent of the smaller so if it is independent of the smaller we need to find this q value the charge enclosed by this ball here so actually in previous question an important question so say this so again our uh, usual gauss law application so that means by using gauss law so by using gauss law like by the integral of e bar dot d a bar is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times the charge and closer q in and so now here again say we can say a small elemental area here and this is our uh, da bar and e bar will also be along the same direction so for spherical surfaces energy will get some conditions so if it is a gauss surface is a cylindrical like our previous derivations then for some uh, surfaces may be flux may be zero and for some surfaces may be flux may be non zero values to be there But spherical surface, it's almost you will get uh, like this one. So now we can write this side. Well. So like e to d a to cos zero. This is equal to one by epsilon naught times the q plus some q dash or small q m n, where small q is the charge present in this region. Right? Now the charge present within this Gaussian surface is two parts. Let uh, q be the charge. Present in this ball, and a small p is the charge contained in the surrounding medium. That means from capital R to small r. In that region, in this region, some small q is there. That is we are assuming here. First, you may mention that that capital q be the charge given to the ball, charge contained in the ball. So we need to find the expression for capital Q only, right? So now this is our equation. So e into four pi r square this side that will be equal to one by epsilon r times q plus q. So suppose this is equation one. Now we need to calculate the small q value here. That means we have uh, to substitute in this equation. So that uh, q value we can calculate uh, from uh, by using this equation. Charge enclosed in shell of in a radius capital r and outer radius small r got it that means this we are taking as a shell now we are going to calculate charge enclosed within this shell here of in a radius small capital r and outer radius uh, small r so that is uh, our uh, calculation here that means we are going to calculate this q value here therefore that q is nothing but Integral of rho into dv. This dv is uh, dv meaning is same. We need to take a spherical element and the volume of that spherical element we need to write here. So I am substituting those values directly. So that means this rho value is given as alpha by r. This dv value I am directly substituting, like our previous rule, four by r square into dr. Right? Now the limits are according to this. Our limits are from capital R to small r. But if we need to integrate from r to r. So now let us simplify this. So then 4 by alpha into this r and r will be cancelled. So this is nothing but r into d r from capital R to small r. Therefore q is equal to 4 by alpha into r square by which we will get. It. So r square minus r square by. It. So therefore this q is nothing but 2 by alpha into r square minus r square by. Let us substitute this value in this equation here. Let us substitute this value in this equation. In the first equation, so from equation one, 
e into 4 by r square is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times q plus 2 by alpha into r square minus r square. Right? And this, from this I am writing this e is equal to. So I can write this known as q plus 2 by r, r square alpha minus 2 by alpha into r square by 4 by epsilon naught into r square. So now let us separate this down here. So just I am separating the down square. I am writing this as the first down here. So then if you cancel this 2 by r square down, you can cancel here in this. Then you will get like alpha by 2 epsilon naught by plus in this nothing we can cancel here. So I am writing that as a uh, one down here. 2 by alpha r square by 4 by epsilon naught r square. Right? Suppose this is our equation 2. So now let us come to the given condition. Our given condition is now this is the intensity of electric field at a distance r from the small r from the center of the ball and outside the ball. Right? Now the given condition is this expression has to be independent of the small r. This expression should not depend on the small r. That is our given condition. So I will do the remaining calculation here. So the given condition is uh, E is a constant. That means it should not depend on this. Therefore, it is possible. That means E value is constant when this term is zero, right? Otherwise, if this term is not zero, this is already a constant value. Alpha is a constant that is given. That we know two epsilon naught is also a constant value. Then this term, if this term is constant, sorry, if, if this term is zero, then automatically electric field will become a constant. If this term is not zero, electric field will be variable because here r square term, small r square term will be there. And so that given E is constant, that is possible only when q minus 2 pi alpha r square is equal to zero. Or we can write this q is equal to 2 pi alpha into r square. So now this is the charge enclosed by this ball here. So that is now our answer. So the charge enclosed by this ball is nothing but given by this expression here, right? So that is our calculation of this. So that means just we are applying the Gauss law and in Gauss law we have two types of, that means two charges are there. One charge is are contained within the ball and the next one is charge between this capital R and the small R. So that we need to calculate according to the given variation here, given density. And then if we substitute in this, finally we are getting this expression. This E term must be constant, that is given condition in problem. Then this term should be zero. Just we are equating this term to the zero, then you will get that expression for this uh, uh, Q value here, which are the contained contain within this ball. Note that. So I will give two problems based on this. I go two problems. Not there. The charge density, the volume charge density, the space varies according to the equation. Rho is equal to rho naught into e power minus alpha or q. The charge density in a space varies with the distance or as rho is equal to rho naught into e power minus alpha or q. And when the rho naught is constant and alpha is constant. Find intensity of electric field. Find intensity of electric field. At a point, at a point, at a distance smaller from the charge distribution, center of the charge distribution, at a distance smaller from the center of the charge distribution. Also write the expression for electric field, 
also write the expression for electric field when r is very small and r is very large or i can express it as alpha r cube is very much less than 1 alpha r cube is very much greater than that means when r is very small and r is very large we can express like that so that is one problem and write the another problem and this is uh, there is no any sphere or anything here when you throw this space that uh, garden she is wearing like this that means if you are taking a uh, suppose this is the cos and sin we are taking here this direction you can take this as or here then limits we need to integrate from zero the charge and force while we are calculating charge and force we can integrate from zero to small r here there is no any other uh, another object here and next here uh, next problem this is sphere of radius r the charge density in a sphere of radius r the charge density in a sphere of radius r varies with the distance from the center of the sphere varies with the distance from the center of the sphere that is smaller in radius as rho is equal to rho not into r then find the expression for then find the expression for intensity of electric field find the expression for intensity of electric field inside and outside the sphere inside and outside the sphere right the similar to that of the first problem but then this the function is different so try this the two problems here Next, I am going to the another important concept or another important application. This Gauss law here. That is about this electric field in the cavities. So, electric field in the cavities uh, calculation is very important, and there will be a lot of problems based on this. And actually, this cavity problems we also solved in our uh, uh, say gravitation. In gravitation, also we calculated the gravitation field inside the cavity, right? So just the, all the calculation, the total calculation will be similar to that. density of electric field inside a spherical cavity right so now in this we can write this as uh, suppose i am taking a spherical cavity is present uh, inside a sphere of radius say a a so this is sphere of radius a having uniform charge density rho now in this a spherical cavity is present here this radius of this cavity is suppose say b and now the distance is the center c1 and this is the uh, center c2 and so then this distance i am taking as some c right and so now this is total it is having some positive charge density here this total ball is having some positive charge density so in this a cavity is made like this now we need to calculate intensity of electric field at any point uh, inside this cavity so first write that description about this diagram consider consider a sphere of radius a consider a sphere of radius a having uniform charge density rho having uniform charge density rho a spherical cavity of radius b is made inside it a spherical cavity of radius b is made inside it such that such that the distance of the distance of center of cavity from the center of the sphere is the distance of center of cavity from the center of the sphere is c we need to find intensity of electric field at any point inside the cavity at any point inside the cavity let us say p that means at the point p we need to write the intensity of electric field here 
and for this uh, we know the intensity of electric field inside the solid sphere at any point we can write it as actually it is uh, q by 4 pi epsilon naught into r cube into smaller and we know this you can write in terms of charge density so if i write in terms of charge density then it will be rho by 3 epsilon naught into r you will get right this is our intensity of electric field inside this so now this expression we need to write in vector form here in vector form if you are writing the intensity of electric field inside we can write this as rho by 3 epsilon naught into r cube sorry r bar right so that the electric field will be in the direction of r bar if this charge is positive charge density if this charge density is negative charge density then it will be opposite to that then here it we should take it as negative sign here in case of uh, negative charge density so here it is a positive charge density so if you solve the problem in terms of this charge density then calculation will be easy for us even though in the problem if q is given to you then convert that into a row only and in terms of row you can write the charge density expressions more easily and so now let us come to this calculation here now here this calculation we can solve it in two different ways and that means one approach is like we consider this as a total sphere without any cavity here so without any cavity we assume this total sphere like this this let it be a sphere of radius say a right without any cavity next instead of that cavity we assume an opposite charge density here suppose this is sphere of radius b having this minus rho charge density so this is plus rho and this is minus rho now we assume that this is sphere of radius uh, that means sphere of radius b having this charge density minus rho is assumed to be placed in this in this inside this that means in this place that sphere of uh, radius b and having minus charge density is assumed to be placed in this region so if we place in this region where that is assumption if you are placing inside this the net charge is initially this charge is the charge present here is positive like this so this is actually that place here now we are placing that negative charge here same amount of negative charge and so that net charge in that region will become zero so net charge in that region is becoming zero means it is nothing but equivalent to a cavity no charge is present in that region and so now that means this results as uh, a sphere with the cavity here so then that is the resultant here right that means we can assume like this we can assume like that and so now the resultant electric field at that point we can write as electric field due to the positive charge density due to the whole sphere plus electric field due to this negative charge density here right and if you add those two uh, vectorically then you will get the resultant electric field at that point so that is one approach we can assume total sphere is positive charge density and then uh, the wherever the cavity is present that cavity space or the cavity volume we consider it as a negative opposite charge density there so when we combine them that results as our cavity there and so that the resultant electric field at any required point is a resultant electric field the electric field due to this positively charged sphere without any cavity this is without any cavity plus the uh, electric field due to this cavity having opposite charge density right so like that you can calculate at any point so that is one approach the second method is the second method we used uh, free, uh, previously also like in the moment of inertia calculation and in gravitation also like suppose in gravitation suppose this is uh, a sphere of mass m and from this certain part is removed here now a point mass is placed at this point here right now if suppose if I ask what is the gravitation force acting on this due to this remaining sphere that means sphere with a cavity then generally what we will do is here the force on the force due to this remaining is equal to we can write as force due to original sphere that means without any cavity minus force due to removed part right so that means the uh, force due to this remaining sphere we can write it as force due to original sphere minus force due to the remote part that means we calculate the force due to this force due to this sphere without any cavity that is our force due to original sphere 
and we calculate the force acting on this point due to this cavity and as we are removing this cavity and we remove that, uh, that amount of force also that means we subtract that amount of force also that gives the uh, force due to the remaining sphere and so now like this also now we can solve here also the electric field due to the original sphere without any cavity minus electric field due to the cavity and if you subtract them then you will get the electric field uh, due to this remaining object here as we know very well about this uh, method here I am applying this method you can solve like that also both are different only the initial approach will be different that is only that uh, difference there between those two methods uh, both are finally or the, uh, from the first equation itself both the equations are same the uh, assumption is different there so that means here we need to assume this oppositely charged density there So now let us uh, follow the uh, previous method like now we can write this electric field at that point inside the cavity we can write as electric field due to this original, original sphere minus electric field due to this remote part right. So that gives us electric field uh, due to the remaining object or inside this cavity. So now this is our point here we are assuming a point P here. At that point, we need to calculate this intensity of electric field. Suppose I am taking this distance from distance of the point from the center of the sphere as R1. So, its vector I can take it as R1 bar. And similarly from the center C2, it is R2 bar. Right? And this C1, C2 vector, you can take it as C bar. I will explain that later. Now, I am writing this intensity of electric field due to this original sphere. So, due to original sphere means we can apply this expression. Our point is inside the sphere only, original sphere without any cavity. And then it is at a distance of R1. So we can write in vector form like this. So rho by 3 epsilon naught into R1 bar, right? So that is original sphere minus. Now electric field due to this remaining sphere we need to calculate. That means removed part. So, for this removed part also, that means we are assuming that before removing this, if this part is not removed, then force due to this part we are calculating here. So, then we need to assume here also the charge density plus rho will be there. Then for this sphere, the point is again inside. So, again we can apply this formula here. So, it is rho by 3 epsilon naught into R2 bar, right? The same thing, only the distance from the center here is R2 here from that center of that particular sphere and so now this is e bar is equal to rho by 3 epsilon naught you can write you can take common then r1 bar minus r2 bar right now r1 bar minus r2 bar value we need to write here so the r1 bar minus r2 bar value can consider by using this triangle c1 c2 p if the triangle is considered so from triangle C1, C2, P. If the triangle is considered, that means I will draw this diagram here. This is C1, C2, this is R1 and this is R2. Suppose this vector I am taking as C bar. That C bar direction we are defining from C1 to C2. Now we can observe that if you apply the triangle law for this triangle law of vector addition, this is the resultant of these two vectors because these two vectors are taken in same order, right? And so I can write this R1 bar is equal to R2 bar plus C bar. From this we need C bar is equal to R1 bar minus R2 bar you can write. Therefore, the cavity as rho by 3 epsilon naught into C bar we can write here. So now the important thing here is C is a constant value. Actually we are calculating at the point P here. So that indicates now at any point inside this cavity electric field will be same only. It only depends on this, this C, the distance between center of the cavity and the center of the sphere. Therefore they mention that the intensity of electric field inside the cavity is uniform, uniform electric field, uniform in the sense constant electric field will be there. So at any point it will be same only. So at any point the electric field will be same. So at any point electric field is same that means uniform electric field will be there. And it depends only on the center distance between center of the cavity and the center of the sphere. So therefore I can write 
inside cavity field is uniform field is uniform and uh, it is along from C1 to C2 if rho is positive that means if charge density is positive then it is from C1 to C2 if it is charge density is negative then it is uh, opposite direction you will get here so that is the intensity of electric field inside the spherical cavity important calculation and you need to remember actually that formula rho by 3 epsilon naught so you need to remember that it does not depend on the uh, radius of the C2 or radius of the C1 it only depends on this distance between those two centers there that means it only depends on the C value here C and charge density charge density will be uniform so that means electric field at any point inside the cavity will be same and it only depends on the distance of center of the cavity and the center of this uh, sphere so only depends on the C value here that means its magnitude we can write as the electric field magnitude inside the cavity I can write this magnitude as rho by 3 epsilon naught into C just we write the C as a distance between those two points here so this electric field inside this uh, cavity and even if they ask suppose if you are taking the second method the second that means first method by assuming uh, this has positive char charge density and this has a negative charge density and we are combining them the only difference is in this equation then we write this as electric field is equal to electric field due to this complete sphere plus electric field due to this cavity that means the removed part we add them because there we are combining them so we should add them and so now this term we need to write this as rho by 3 epsilon naught into r1 bar plus now we are assuming this sphere is having in the first method in the first method this sphere is having some negative charge so negative charge means an electric field and the r bar both are opposite in direction so that we need to take the negative sign here minus rho by 3 epsilon naught into r2 bar we need to write here so this is only the difference this is only the difference the, then from the next step onwards the same thing you will get here so whether you are solving by that method or this method both are said so as we know already this part in moment of inertia we used that when certain part is removed from that the moment of inertia of the remaining object we calculated like this and then uh, like in the gravitation gravitation also we solve some problems uh, based on this and so then you can follow this method the both the methods are same only just initial approach will be different initial assumptions will be different there and so that the, uh, from the after this the remaining calculation is everything will be same in both the methods right and there will be some problems based on this and even in this and here the important thing you need to remember is in due to this suppose due to this remaining part we are calculating electric field inside the cavity even if they ask outside the cavity or outside the sphere our calculation will be same suppose if they are asking at this point here right so even if they ask outside our calculation procedure will be different but these two expressions are not valid because this expression is valid only inside this rho by 3 epsilon naught into r you can write only inside the sphere you can't write for the outside because now if you consider a point p outside this point is becoming outside for both cavity as well as for the original sphere so this method is same i am saying the method is same the original electric field due to the original sphere minus electric field due to the remo uh, removed part we need to write but this formula you can't substitute outside formula our outside formula is nothing but uh, k q by small r square formula we need to write here so then k q by small r square and similarly this is some if you are taking whole charge as capital q and this you may consider it as a small q that means what i am saying is if this i am taking as capital q the total original charge and this part you may consider it as a small q then in that case at this point if i want to write here then that i can write it as k capital q by small r square where small r is the distance or r1 let it be r1 is the distance from the center of the sphere minus k into small q by r2 square where r2 is the distance from c2 and small q and capital q value you can calculate if rho is given you can substitute in terms of the rho here that means even if it is outside or inside the cavity our procedure will be same 
but only if the point is outside electric field outside formula we need to write if our point is inside the electric field inside the formula we need to write right got it so this is the electric field inside the cavity in one of the uh, previous slide directly they asked me about this formula here what is the electric field inside this cavity and how it depends multi character type whether it depends on r1 or the means a or b or c it only depends on that c values right and even if they ask outside then this is the processor here the same process but only these expressions are not valid we need to take outside formula here and there will be some other problems based on this so i will explain after discussing this uh, uh, spherical cavity also sorry cylindrical cavity also so the same process will be there for the cylindrical cavity also but only that formula is different here intensity of electric field inside the cylinder is different what is the formula for inside the cylinder so let us say this electric field inside a cylindrical cavity so we'll change the marker so inside a cavity cylindrical cavity that means here i am taking the situation like this this is a long cylinder suppose that this is the axis of this cylinder and so that its radius is a now here in this it is having some uh, volume charge density here this is totally having some volume charge density in this now i am taking a cylindrical cavity here a cylindrical cavity is made like this now this is a removed part this part is not there in this this is a uh, empty space will be there here now this radius i am taking it as b and the distance between the center of this axis of the uh, original cylinder and axis of the cavity as c got it these are the dimensions same as that of our uh, a uh, spherical cavity so i am taking the same notation so that you can remember them easily right a is the radius of the original cylinder and b is the radius of the uh, cavity and c is the distance between axis of the original cylinder and axis of the cavity and now we are assuming that this cylinder is having some charge density rho here volume charge distribution this is this total uh, charge density rho will be there here right it is having some charge density rho now we need to find intensity of electric field at any point inside this cavity and now this is the uh, original uh, view here now i am drawing the top view when you are observing from the top view then we can write it as when you are observing from the top you can observe the situation like this it appears like same as that of our uh, uh, previous cylinder previous sphere spherical cavity so this is a now this is our b And this is the C. So now again we take some point P here, set a distance of R1 from this and R2 from this, right? This is the top view. When you are observing from the top, top view of this cylinder here. When you are observing from the top, then it appears like this, and it is having same uh, volume charge density here. right and so now the same approach the same process everything will be same the only difference is intensity of electric field inside the cylinder so inside the cylinder our formula is we derived already in the previous class so like it is uh, rho by 2 epsilon not into r you will get right in vector form if you are writing then you can just keep bar and so now here the same process everything will be same so directly i am writing here only the difference is this equation so the electric field inside the cavity we can write it as uh, electric field due to the original cylinder minus 
substitute those expressions and uh, simplify that. That means I can write this as uh, electric field inside this cavity is equal to due to the original sphere I can write as rho by 2 epsilon naught into A that means R1 bar sorry this is R1 bar minus rho by 2 epsilon naught into R2 bar right now therefore this can be simplified as electric field inside this cavity is equal to rho by 2 epsilon naught into R1 bar minus R2 bar and again the same calculation you will get here that means you can consider the triangle like this suppose this is our point P then R1 bar and this is the R2 bar this is C1 and this is C2 here so I can consider this as some C bar like this therefore from this you can write this C bar as from this diagram you can write this C bar as R1 bar minus R2 bar you can write Therefore, this electric field inside the cavity, you can write this as rho by 2 epsilon naught into C bar, you can write. And so, in magnitude, you can write as electric field inside the cavity is equal to rho by 2 epsilon naught into C, you can write here. That means now this field is also constant only. Electric field inside the cylindrical cavity is also constant. And it also depends on the distance between the axis of the cylinder, original cylinder and axis of the cavity only, right? And then the direction of electric field is also same. If it is positive, then it is from C1 to C2 here. This is the direction of this electric field. And so then, uh, that means, so inside cavity, inside cavity, electric field is uh, uniform, is uniform. and it is from C1 to C2 if rho is positive that means if charge density is positive then it is from C1 to C2 if charge density is negative then it is in opposite direction here so I can write this uh, field lines and for the previous one also draw the field lines diagram there so that you will get the clarity about that so that means here the field lines is nothing but uh, so I will draw this diagram here from this so that means field lines you can represent like this so that you can understand uh, how the field is so then our field is this is having some positive charge density we are considering here this is having total I am representing like simply plus rho positive charge density now the electric field is we are saying from C1 to C2, right? And so that this electric field lines will be like this. So the electric field is uh, from C1 to C2. Uniform field will be there like this. Equidistant and uniform field. So you know uniform field can be represented like this. And draw this diagram for the spherical also, for the spherical cavity also. Because you will get the same diagram. And this is again the top view of the cylinder here. For the sphere, it will be the diagram for this. So that means same diagram you will get for this both cylindrical and spherical. For the cylindrical, it will be there throughout this. If the cavity is like this, cylindrical, then everywhere these lines will be there. And so then uh, that is a uh, ray diagram. That means uh, field lines inside this cavity here. So field is uniform, field will be there inside this. Got it? So that is the expression for this electric field inside the spherical cavity and inside this uh, cylindrical cavity. Now there will be some problems based on this spherical cavity or cylindrical cavity. So let us uh, see those problems now. I will explain some of those problems then you can solve the remaining problems. So here uh, uh, let us write one problem here. Two identical spheres two identical spheres each of radius r each of radius r are having uniform charge density
plus row and minus row respectively. Plus row and minus row respectively. Assume, assume that these two spheres are overlapping on each other. Overlapping on each other as shown in the figure. Overlapping on each other as shown in the figure. Find, find intensity of electric field intensity of electric field at any point at any point in the superposing area or in the superposing space superposing volume so at any point in the superposing space so at any point in the superposing space so it's a previous question only and again the same either a cylindrical cavity uh, like such a cylindrical cavity or this type of cushions will be there in magnetism also so now here they say uh, these two spheres are superposing here the same almost the same questions will be there in magnetism there generally those are cylindrical conductors there we consider here current carrying conductors so now see here the same proce uh, process so this is the superposing area here i am taking one point p here say at a distance of R1 bar from the center of the first sphere and R2 bar from the center of the second sphere. Right? And now let us write the electric field. Now you just you need to observe this that point P will belongs to this first sphere because it is inside that sphere and at the same time that point P is also the internal point for the second sphere. Right? So for both of them we can write the inside formula. That means that uh, now the resultant electric field at that point P is nothing but electric field due to the first sphere plus electric field due to the second sphere. Just we are adding them. Here nothing is removed. Right? Just the, those two spheres are superposing on each other. Then resultant electric field we are writing. Electric field due to the first sphere plus electric field due to the second sphere. And so that then this can be written as uh, this net electric field is equal to again same formula we can write here rho by 3 epsilon naught into R1 bar plus now this is the negative charge negative charge density so negative charge density means why we are writing due to this positive charge density electric field will be around this direction only like say I can represent like E1 like this so E1 and R1 bar both are in the same direction but electric field due to this negative charge density will be E2 direction will be like this so E2 bar will be along this direction here that means towards the center. R2 bar is attached from the center. E2 bar will be towards the center. That's why we need to take the negative sign there. So minus rho by 3 epsilon naught into R2 bar we can write. That is our E2. So whenever this negative charge density is there, you need to remember this, uh, this point here. So you need to take the negative sign in vector form. Therefore this net electric field again... Uh, rho by 3 epsilon naught I am taking common then R1 bar minus R2 bar and we know about this calculation very well that R2 bar minus R1 bar is nothing but you will get uh, C bar this is R1 bar and R2 bar so this is C1 and C2 where C bar is the distance between those two centers therefore that C bar we can write as R1 bar minus R2 bar we can write therefore this net electric field we can write as rho by 3 epsilon naught into C bar we can write. So this is a net electric field. So that depends again only on the distance between those two centers. It doesn't depend on the distance from the uh, C1 or distance from the C2. And here again the direction is also the direction of electric field lines also from C1 to C2. That means if you want to write the field lines, again uniform field will be there. Same as that of our cavity we are getting. Got it? Because this behaves like a cavity only. Because here net charge in this region is nothing but zero. That is nothing but uh, first method what we are discussing there. We are assuming positive and negative charges inside, inside this cavity. We are assuming a, a negative charged sphere is placed there. So that net charge in the region will become zero. So here also the net charge in this region is becoming zero. So that it behaves like a cavity only. And so now the electric field lines will be like this. Just I am representing the electric field lines. So throughout this volume, the electric field lines will be there like this, from C1 to C2. So that is a uniform field will be there, which depends only on this uh, C, distance between those two centers. 
right so that is one problem so note that i will explain the next problem So next problem just I will explain so that you can solve by yourself this uh, cavity problems. So here I can write this as uh, this is pair of radius or having some uh, uniform charge density rho. Now here have some charge density rho and there is some cavity here spherical cavity of diameter r is made here suppose this is our uh, center c and this point is b and here i am taking a point a here right so now this is our cavity so now in this question write that question actually a spherical cavity of diameter r a spherical cavity of diameter r is made in a sphere of radius r is made in a sphere of radius r having charge density rho charge density rho find find electric potential at the points a comma b and C electric potentials at the points A comma B and C shown in figure next question if an electron of mass M if an electron of mass M and a charge minus E is released from the point A is released from the point A find find time taken by the electron time taken by the electron to strike the surface of sphere surface of cavity to strike the surface of cavity and also find and also find with what velocity it strikes a surface, surface of cavity? With what velocity it strikes the surface of cavity? Neglect gravity. That means we are not considering any gravity here. So these calculations you can do. Just I will explain for uh, one of that. So then generally while writing for this potential, you may consider that charges there. Like suppose I am taking this capital Q is a charge present in this sphere without cavity, total charge. And a charge is a present uh, in this charge in this sphere of radius R by 2, right? And so now here, uh, I can write like this. Suppose I am writing potential of point C here. The potential at that point C I am writing. And so now the potential due to the ori original sphere, same process. Minus potential due to the removed part right if q is a capital q is a charge present on the original sphere i am taking and so then this can be written as 3 k q by 2 r so why we are writing this because for the complete sphere that point c is the center center of the complete sphere at the center of the complete sphere this potential is given by this expression. We already know this. We derived an expression for potential at any distance at any point inside the uh, solid sphere. And this is uh, at the center. Right? And now similarly, this point, how this point is uh, for this cavity. For this cavity, this point is on the surface. Right? And so then this is nothing but minus k into on the surface means k q by small r capital R we need to write here r means r by 2 radius of that sphere we need to write that means we are treating this as a one surface and so for that surface this is our point c is lying on the surface so that formula we need to calculate and capital q and small q values we can write here rho into like 4 by 3 pi r cube 
and a small q is rho into 4 by 3 pi r by 2 whole cube. Right? These are capital Q and small q values. So that is point C here. You can simplify that. You will get the potential at point C. The same process we need to write for this point B and point A also. Right? For point B, it is a for this uh, original sphere, it is just at a distance of uh, r by 2 from the center. So, potential inside that original sphere we need to write. And for the cavity, the, uh, that point B is the center. So, then 3 small k q by a small r we need, that means 2 into r we need to write. 2 into r is nothing but r by 2. Here the radius is r by 2 we need to write. The same process for the point A also. Got it? So, potential at that point, particular point due to the original sphere, minus potential due to the removed part we need to write. So, for the original sphere, where that point lies and for the cavity or for the removed sphere, where that point lies. So, just you need to observe that and corresponding formula we need to write there. So, I think you can calculate the remaining points uh, uh, B and C. You can simplify this further by substituting this uh, small q and capital Q values and simplify uh, remaining, solve the remaining parts also, right? And let us come to the next question. So, now the next question is, here we are releasing an electron here. So, if you release an electron, what will happen? Here, gravity is neglected. So, if you release an electron there, what will happen? So, if you release an electron, the electron will experience some force. Because, here the direction of electric field is along this direction. The direction of electric field from center of the uh, sphere to center of the cavity because it is uh, positive charge only. So, the electric field will be along this direction. So, then electron will experience a force in opposite direction here. So, the force acting on the electron will be E into E. That will be in opposite direction because it is a negative charge. And so, force acting on the electron will be opposite to that of uh, electric field. And so, then a force will act like this. And because of that force, the electron will start accelerating. So, it starts accelerating from here to here. And so, then uh, they are asking just a time taken. So, I am taking the second part of this problem. The first part, I think you can do the remaining these two calculations. Now, I am going to the second part. So, that means force acting on the electron is E into E. And where E value is, we already know. Where electric field is, rho by 3 epsilon naught into C, we need to write. Electric field inside the cavity. So, here C is nothing but distance between center of cavity and the center of the sphere. So, the distance is nothing but R by 2 here. So, that means it is rho R by 6 epsilon naught. Got it? This is the electric field. And so, substitute there. Therefore, I can write MA is equal to rho into R by 6 epsilon naught into this is E. Now, from this you can write acceleration. Rho R into E by 6 M epsilon naught. Right? Now, we can observe that this acceleration is a constant value. So, acceleration is constant. As the field is uniform, then you can conclude that acceleration is a constant. So, field is uniform, field will be there. So, as a uniform field is there, that means acceleration is constant in the sense. Now, we can use S is equal to half a d square term you can use. Because the particle is moving with the uniform acceleration. And initial velocity is 0. We are releasing from rest here so that you can write initial velocity is 0. Right? And so now it has to travel a distance of from here to here. Then it will strike so exactly the opposite point which is nothing but C. So then it has to travel a distance of R. So R is equal to half into A is nothing but uh, rho R into E by 6 epsilon naught into M into T square. Therefore the T value we can write as uh, under root of 12 M epsilon naught by rho into E. So, that is the time taken there. Time taken to travel from one end to other end. And if you want to calculate velocity. So, the velocity you can calculate either by using V square minus U square is equal to 2AS. Or you can also use it as V is equal to U plus AT. Because we already calculated the T value. So, either you can use V square minus U square is equal to 2AS. Or V is equal to U plus AT we can use. So, then uh, as we know the T value just I am using this equation there. So, then A is nothing but rho into R into E by 6 M epsilon naught into T value I am substituting from this. So, I am using this equation there. So, then it is 12 into M epsilon naught by rho into E. 
So then you can simplify further, then you will get the velocity with which it strikes the uh, other surface, that means other point here. So it is a way of calculating this uh, problem here. Note it. And there will be a lot of problems basing on this cavity. So I will give some of those problems and uh, try those problems. See, in the same problem, uh, for example, instead of releasing the electron from the point A, I am releasing it from another point here. Note this and find the time taken and velocity. Second part of this problem. Suppose I am releasing this particle from here. This is C, B and this is A. We are releasing from this point, uh, suppose say D. This is our point D, which makes an angle of 45 degrees here with the line A, B, C. So we are releasing the electron from rest here. An electron is released from this point here. So just mention it as the next question. In the above question, if electron is released from the point D as shown in the figure, then draw this diagram again. In the above question, if electron is released from the point D as shown in the figure, find time taken time taken by the electron to strikes the surface of the cavity to strike the surface of cavity for the first time and with what velocity it strikes the surface of cavity and with what velocity So here I mentioned for the first time in the sense, for, for example, if any uh, type of like elastic collisions are taking place, here it may undergo this multiple collisions, uh, multiple uh, times it may strike the surface there. So for that I am taking it as for the first time it is colliding. For the first time it is hitting that, we need to find that, right? So next. So now I am taking a cavity like this. This is sphere here. Now I am taking a cavity like this. This is suppose say now R by 2 and this is R. Now our point is somewhere here. A. And next B is here. And next C is somewhere here. So we need to find fine. This is having some charge density rho. Let us consider. As shown in the figure, next question, this is, as shown in the figure, a spherical and a concentric cavity of radius r by 2, a spherical and a concentric cavity of radius r by 2 is made in a sphere of radius r, is made in a radius of uh, made in a sphere of radius r having charge density rho having charge density rho then find intensity of electric fields at the points at the point at a distance smaller from the center at a distance smaller from the center find intensity of electric field at a distance smaller from the center when r is less than r by 2 that means point a and r by 2 less than r less than capital r that means point b and the third one is uh, when this capital R is less than this, uh, smaller, that means outside. Now in the previous problem, the cavity is not concentric, right? Now here I am taking a concentric cavity. Then we need to answer about this uh, point, intensity of electric field at the point A and point B and point C. Can you say at point A, what is the intensity of electric field at the point A? Either you can apply our formula for the cavity what we derived, or generally also you can say. 
if you apply that formula for the cavity our formula is uh, rho by 3 epsilon naught into c right our formula is intensity of electric field inside the cavity is rho by 3 epsilon naught into c we are writing where c this c is distance of the cavity for the center of the cavity from the center of the sphere right now in this problem the distance is zero this value is zero and so that intensity of electric field at the cavity inside this cavity will be zero right got it that means there is no electric field at any point here so if the cavity is concentric then electric field inside this cavity will be zero that simply you can assume that this sphere is made up of a thin spherical shells that means you can consider this thin spherical shell like this such a lot of thin spherical shells you can consider here for each thin spherical shell this point a is lying inside and in by using gauss law and previously also we know that inside the spherical shell intensity of electric field is zero and so that due to all these uh, shells from uh, starting from this r by 2 to r for all the thin uh, electric uh, shells thin shells electric field at this point will be zero only right so like that also we can explain or by using this formula also we can write here therefore i can write this intensity of electric field at point a is zero now see how to find this second condition here this is the first condition here when r is less than r by 2 next suppose i am taking the second condition here uh, like a second condition means r by 2 less than r less than capital r it lies at the point b i am taking here and so now we need to apply our gauss law we need to follow our procedure gauss law we need to apply here so that means integral of e bar dot uh, da bar or ds bar is equal to 1 by epsilon naught times q in right and so now just directly i am substituting those values here e into da is nothing but here again that e bar and da bar will be along the same direction here at point b if i consider da is along this direction e is also along this direction so then e into 4 pi r square i am writing here and this term is we know already next the term we need to calculate here 1 by epsilon naught into this side also rho into volume we need to write here rho is constant only so no need of any integrations here so directly we can write it as uh, rho into volume so the charge is present only within this volume here so that volume only we need to write so i can write that volume as 4 by 3 pi small r cube minus 4 by 3 pi r by 2 whole cube got it only between these two but from r by 2 to smaller we need to write here this is our smaller one only that volume we need to write here because only charge is present only within this part here within this part only charge is there this part is cavity and so you can simplify that therefore e is equal to rho by this 4 pi i think you can take 4 pi common and you can cancel that rho by epsilon naught into 3 epsilon naught into r square into here uh, if you take that 4 by 3 common then r cube term will be there minus here that is uh, r cube by 8 term will be there right 4 by 3 pi we are taking common 4 pi will be cancelled on both sides 3 will be remaining here so this will be our expression here you can write r inside and if you want you can simplify that so this is uh, electric field at the point b there similarly calculate at the point c point c will be easy only you can write outside formula for the electric field due to the complete sphere minus electric field due to this point we can write here at the point c if you want to write or you can calculate the charge enclosure here just similar to this you can write charge enclosure then here this term will change us from r cube until here r cube minus r by 2 whole cube we will get directly like this also you can write there so that is our choice so similarly find at the point c so these are some problems based on this cavity here so all these problems you can solve easily if you understand these concepts here inside the cavity and that is rho by 3 epsilon naught into c where c is the distance from center of the cavity to the center of the sphere and if the charge is positive then it is from the center of the sphere to the center of cavity that is the direction of the electric field if it is negative it will be opposite direction and if the cavity is concentric like this this is important here if the cavity is concentric like this then electric field at any point inside will be zero only.
inside that cavity will be zero only. And then if any intermediate point, if it is like this, then we need to calibrate like this. And at point C, as I said, you can solve easily. Here, just only here, these values will change us here. That is nothing but here, uh, charge enclosure is nothing but capital R cube minus here, this term will be small r cube will be there. The, only these two, uh, here change will be there in that, uh, for point C here. Capital R cube, we need to write there. At point C, if you want to write. Got it? So then practice the problems uh, given in the thing is uh, based on this uh, uh, cavities and the based on the Gauss law applications. And in the next class, we will discuss some more applications of this Gauss law. Thank you.